Is there a volume slider for jukebox mode? I in control settings. it. You can change it in settings Fox on yours. Hero. All right, welcome to Curse of Strahd. Gotcha. You guys have finished up in the house that the two children called you in. Outside, Strahd has returned a sipiter from the death, dying to the ancient creature deep below that you appeased in a sacrifice. The house behind you is now in worse shape than you found it before. The windows are boarded up, but the boards are uh, uh, decaying with rot, age, years within them. The walls of the house themselves are beginning to crumble away. The house is nothing as you remember. Behind you, Tall shapes loom out of the dense fog that surrounds everything. The muddy ground underfoot gives way to slick, wet cobblestones. The tall shapes become recognizable as village dwellings. The windows of each house stare out from pools of blackness. No sound cuts the silence, except for the mournful sobbing that echoes through the streets from a distance. You have arrived. <clears throat> In the village of Barovia, hmm. which is huge. huge. Holy. Now, you? forgive me, Baro the village of Barovia is in Barovia the place. Yes, right? Barovia is both. Yes. Okay. The answer is just yes. Is the house oh. we were in on this map? It is, yes. Oh, Barovia. It is up here. Nice. Okay. Oh, somebody's flipping. That's just sorry. I'll bloop, bloop. do not disturb. All right, uh, your guys's tokens are not on this map, um, but I yeah, you guys are currently just seated out, situated out here. So we're not going to do this in initiative, but I'll pass the conversation to you guys to decide what you want to do. Sorry, Mike, you are a high elf, right? I am a high, high elf. Okay. I do not like to associate with being in the high up. Oh. Wow. Okay. Are we're and we're level three now, right? We did level up. Yes, sir. Yeah, you should have leveled up. I yeah, no, I did. I did everything but the devotion thing, that. But Justin and I figured that out. Uh, where am I? There we go. That's me. <clears throat> Here we go. That looks right. Neat. Okay. Uh, one thing of note, the, the fog has dissipated, uh, mm -hmm. and you only see the outline of it, outline of the fog making, uh, kind of surrounding the sky at the edges of the forest that you guys entered. Mm -hmm. So? <clears throat> so what? You just died. Yeah, like... This is weird. Do you need more berries? Uh, no, I'm I'm good for now. Okay. <sighs> so those kids are dead. Yeah, <laughs> they were dead a long time ago. All right. Uh, whoops, sorry. Just playing around here. Ignore me. Uh. <laughs> Don't mind that. Uh, okay. What? Uh, what's? What's? Um, well, what did that I mean, letter say? What did that fucking letter say? Which letter? You the mean one the that one? Us here, Koldovin Indrit Indovich. Kolyan, yes. Yeah, Indrovich. Uh, so we got a uh, Irene. Irene. So she's been affected by evil. So deadly yeah. that even the good people of our village cannot protect her, so we should find where she's at. Uh, well, we should find uh, uh, Kolian, the Bur Burgomaster. Do we yeah. know where he is? No? I Let's don't... find the local tavern and find out. <laughs> Easy. Alright, if you so... want to search, you guys can kind of just, with your, um, your tape measure tool, you can kind of show me the path that you guys want to go. Tape measure... So like if we did like what if we just did went down like this street, came okay, right. 
Hey, Justin, we came from over here, right? No. No. Well, how's, where's the compass on this? Uh, up, uh, up is north. I can make okay. the compass visible for you guys. No, no, uh, no it's all good. Big I just thing... need to know up is north. I think if we like travel down this way, come this way, go down this way, and come to this main drag, we can see a lot of the a lot of the city that way. Also, what are the chances that this is just his house here? Strads? Not Strads. Indovich. That looks like a church with a graveyard in the back. And the letter said something about him being a humble servant. He's a humble servant. No, no, no. That's my letter. That's Strahd's letter. My, po- my, my most pathetic servant. No, it says, I, um, a lowly servant of Barovia. Uh, it does say that. Yeah, lowly servant. So I assume that meant politician, and he was just trying to be humble. I <laughs> uh, don't think so. Whoops. Okay, let's go. Let, let's follow. Uh, yeah, I agree this with way? the elf. Sure. As you guys move your way down uh, the cobblestone streets, the houses loom over you, empty and abandoned. Mm. Claw marks mark up the majority of the doors that have been torn away. Windows that are boarded up are falling to pieces, and the houses, as you pass them, seem to be empty. As you guys hit here, sorry, my thing is invisible to you, for I am the dungeon master. As you guys hit this uh, intersection, uh, right there, yes, uh, you seem to have hit the main strip. The cobblestone on this street is more damaged than the rest, the path you walked. And this also seems to be the road through the city, Old Svalich Road, coming in from your uh, the gate you guys entered, further in to the kingdom of Barovia. What would you guys uh, like to do any, next? Any, any, uh, uh, any taverns would... along the road? Yeah, uh, can I, let's continue down the road into, into the city. Sure. All right, as you guys hit here, See if anything's open. Looking for anything that's open, not just tavern. Sure. As you guys hit here, you pass through a few buildings that are uh, noticeably open. Uh, from some of them, uh, as you guys have also gotten closer, the, cr- the sound of distant crying has become louder. Uh, two buildings have come out to you guys as noticeably open. The one further south, E1, seems to be a general store, while E2 is... One second. Um, A single shaft of light thrusts illumination into the main square, its brightness uh, looking like a solid pillar in the heavy fog. Above the gaping doorway, a sign hangs precariously askew, proclaiming this to be the Blood on the Vine Tavern. Well, there's your tavern, Insipiter. Well, taverns are a good place to find information. That's very true. Shall we? So E2 is the tavern? Yes. What's the name of the tavern? Blood Uh, on the Vine. Yeah, from far away, the sign reads Blood on the Vine from where you're standing. How fitting. Let's, uh, let's go in. Yes. As you guys approach, would you guys please make a perception check? Oh, yeah. Where am I? Uh, da-da-da. Carrot shoot. Look at us rolling good for the first roll. Mm-hmm. Well, for- 13. That's uh, good. Xandra, as you yes. guys are stepping over the threshold into the bar, you notice that the sign <clears throat> does not actually read blood on the vine. It reads blood of the vine, but the F has been scratched out, and or an N has been scratched over the F. Ooh, oh. interesting. Um, it seems that this tavern was once a glorious... Uh, building, but it has grown, sh- it grown shoddy over the years. A blazing fire in the hearth gives scant warmth to the few souls huddled within. Uh, there seems to be four people in the bar, not including the barkeep. The barkeep himself is uh, sitting, standing behind the bar, while a group of three people in colorful clothing, similar to the clothing that the man wore that gave you guys the letter, and then one man is sitting alone in uh, in dark clothing, 
but his, uh, the look on his face is anything but. He sits by himself at a corner table with a glass of wine in front of him. And the other three are three females who are sitting near a table right near the entrance. They're whispering to each other, and as you enter, they stop their conversation and watch you. Um, Tiny waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do like a... Uh, uh, can I do a persuasion to just be like, ignore us, but, you know, like, we're non-threatening and stuff like that? Is there is there like seats near the bar? I'm going to go one by one first. I'm going to start with okay. you, Tiny. Um. As you, as you wave, one of them smirks and waves back to you. What? Asipita, they're, they're I would like to know here. what you're going to say with say to them besides just a persuasion check. Uh, just, it's it, more like a, kind of like a, a, a nod and like, we're just going to go about our business. You go about your business sort of thing. Sort of like a know? good evening, ladies. Like an, an acknowledgement and then like moving on. Sure. You know? I won't make you roll for that. That is definitely something okay. you can do without a persuasion check. Okay. You nod to them and they keep their eyes on you. Um, oh, no. Genlin, there <laughs> I... is, there are a few stools near the bar as well as various tables, but it looks like the majority of them are, uh, there's a lot more open floor space than tables in this place. Okay, do I notice, do I notice the uh, exhibitor making the, the, the nod to the guys in the back? Uh, they're not near the back, they're right near the entrance. Oh, they're right That's near the That's the table of ladies, it's just the... The one dude at the back, right? Yes. The one dude at the back. Oh, he didn't. He ma- you didn't make nod to the one dude at the back, just to the ladies at the front. Correct, because yeah. the ladies were looking at uh, you guys. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go sit at a stool near the bar. The bartender is cleaning a row of glasses. There seems to be about six lined up, and as he wipes through one, he, looks at, he goes to the other and uh, doesn't seem to acknowledge you as you approach. When he finishes that glass, he goes to the next one. And after that, to the next glass. When he finishes the row of glasses, he returns to the first, mindlessly cleaning them, ignorant to the world around him. Sorry, did uh, you say this guy looked like the guy we were... You mentioned his looks? The three no, women... wearing clothing similar. Yes. Oh, okay, bright red sorry, clothing sorry. With, with gold hue in, on it. We're all doing such okay. a good job of paying attention tonight. I, I just, uh, no, I, I'm, like, uh, getting a little bit of cutout from Justin. Oh, really? I, I think it's my Discord connection. I'm getting oh. cut out from all of you. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, I find... I'm going to... I mean, can I, can I like, <clears throat> and then wave at the bartender? As you do, he looks up, and he says to you in a quiet voice, Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, yes, uh, what, can I, can I get a, an ale, please? All we have is wine. Wine would be great. Would you like a glass or a pitcher? (laughs) (laughs) I like this guy. (laughs) Uh, just a glass for now, sir. He holds out his hand and says, one copper piece. Oh shit, only one copper? How much is a gold in copper? A hundred? A (laughs) hundred. Disrupt the economy. I I hand him five copper. Five copper? He puts four down on this table in front of you, sliding them over one under each finger. He takes the one copper for the drink and places it in his pocket, pours you a glass of wine, and returns to cleaning his glasses. Okay, I will pick up the other four copper. Xandra, is there anything you want to do? Um, I will... I want to go over to the table of women. Um, and I'm just going to walk up and say, uh, hello, ladies. How are you doing today? One of them looks up and says, you're not from Barovia, are you? Very astute. I'm not. (laughs) Conversation isn't something that happens often here. Oh. It's probably best if you return to your own matters. I would be happy to. May I ask a favor, if you don't mind while I'm talking to you? Uh, she gives you a blank look. 
as in kind of keep talking, but am I really interested? <laughs> yeah. Um, would you be able to tell me where to find Kolyan Indirovich or Irina Kolyana? Uh, one of them kind of just kind of looks towards her table and then acknowledges with a head over to the man sitting at the back of the tavern. Thank you very much. And I'll go to the bar. All right, Tiny, is there anything you want to do? Uh, I'm just going to follow Xander to the bar. Sure. A sipiter. Um, I am just going to uh, kind of find like a table in the corner if I can and just kind of sit, contemplate a little. Sure. I'm processing some stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah. Gendlin, we'll hop back to you. Um, so no one sat down, but the rest of the party is doing their own thing. They haven't come down to me. No, uh, Xandra and Tiny have walked towards you as well. A oh, okay. has gone and sat alone. Makes sense. A lot. There's a lot for him to think about. Yeah. He just died. I uh, just died. Um, sir, do you have any information about the town? Uh, what's, uh, what's happening? Why, why is everything so, uh, as abandoned? He's, as he's talking... I'll like reach out a hand to his shoulder and just kind of lean in and say, apparently folks don't talk around these parts much. The barkeep does not return any sort of response to your question, just keeping his eyes on his glasses as he goes from one to the other. The man we're looking for is over there. And I'll just kind of like head nod to the, the dude in the corner. Why? Why? If that's a Kervikich or whatever. <laughs> Kervikich. <laughs> Which one was it? <laughs> Love it. Indirovich, I think. Indirovich. I have it open. Yeah. Yes, as as I understand it, or at least perhaps he can tell us where to find them. Oh. Are you guys taking any sort of um? Like, are you trying to hide that you're looking towards this man? Yeah, I'm being subtle. I, I didn't look over when we... I, I saw him when we walked in. I never looked over when she mentioned it, because I know he was still there. Xandra, what about you, Tiny? Uh, yeah, I looked over. All right, can I have Tiny and Xandra please give me a stealth check? Sure. Oh, God. Give me a sec. Just kidding. Oh, gosh. Oop. Wrong tab. Um, while they're doing that... Oh, one second. Something might happen. Oh, okay. Um, Tiny, you notice it. That the man sitting at the table makes eye contact with you. And when he does, like, he smiles. And he stands. I like, I like to point at myself and they're like, me? Yeah, he nods. And he begins to approach. I... I uh, uh, Sandra... What? What is it, Tiny? It's a, it's a man. Uh, what about him? He, he's coming. Um, I'll turn to, to look at him as he walks over. Yeah, he's approaching. Genlin, was there something you wanted to do? Uh, I'm going to ask the bartender for w another glass of wine. I haven't finished mine yet, but I'm gonna, what, I am planning on giving it to the fellow in the corner. Um, he extends his hand for one copper. Yeah. And then you hear a voice say from behind, Eric, I'll be paying for these people's drinks. Welcome to the village of Barovia. You aren't from around here, are you? He approaches. Very, his blonde very, hair. I might be able to show you what he looks like. Give me a second. Exciting. I cannot eat it, losers. That's <laughs> ooh, rough. All right, go, carry on with your describing then. His blonde uh, hair. He has flowing blonde hair that goes to about his chin. And he has bright blue eyes buried underneath uh, bushy eyebrows. He looks he is, like me. He is slender and quite attractive. He's this like man me. is very attractive. <laughs> very <laughs> astute, sir. We are not from around here. 
So, Eric, I would like one, two... You know what? Give me a pitcher and a few glasses, and we will drink and discuss what brings you all to our dour little village. Well, I usually don't uh, get shown up like that. I was about to buy you a drink. But... I appreciate it, but trust me, your money is better with you. I have nothing to do yeah. here in Barovia but drink and waste time away. Oh. Too relatable. I don't I... think I caught your name, sir. My I'm... name is Ismark Indirovich. Can Very I just nice have you water? Uh, the the uh, barkeep doesn't respond to that. And Ismark says, he... Uh, n no, I, he'll only... he Just let's sit. Let's sit and discuss. Okay. But he taps you on the shoulder as high as he re as high as he can reach and says, "But worry not, my friend. You don't need to drink. No pressure." <laughs> Is it even legal for you to drink? Aren't you so young? Yes. I, I am maturity. the ripe old age of fifty-three. Oh, well, his name is different in the roll twenty. That's funny. What is Mark? Yeah. Yeah. He's Kolianovich. But it's Indirovich. <laughs> okay, Indirovich. Well, it's a, a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Indirovich. Um, does he... Do you guys take his offer to come sit with him in the back? Oh, yes. Of course. All right, what about... I'll, as, as we go over, I'll, like, wave to Etzipiter. Etzipiter's just looking at his feet. <laughs> He's just kind of... Our friend will will potentially be right over. Well, yeah, when if he doesn't, if you don't pay attention to me, I'm going to come and get you, <laughs> or at okay. least come over and have a conversation with you about it. I'll, uh, I'll I'll like perk up when you like look up when you come by. Esipeter, uh, <gasps> you've met a local who's able to and willing to talk to us, which is more than most people. Would you like to come meet him with us? Uh, of course, yes. Uh, and I'll get up and like kind of walk towards the table of ladies, and then I'll like take a moment and be like, "No, nope, those guys over there, that's us." And then I'll walk towards the rest of you. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. I'll watch this happen and just kind of follow after him. Um, he, you guys are all seated in the back of the tavern. The barkeep continues to clean glasses, and the three women are having hushed conversation now, not paying any attention to you. Uh, Ismark leans back and says, I would like to cut directly to the chase. I need assistance. And I feel like you, you four might be the ones capable enough, capable enough to help me. Are you... I'll mention the, the letter. He kind of just... He acknowledges with a, a, like a clueless expression. Okay. Um, we potentially might be able to help you. We would certainly be honored to try. Excellent. I need some people to aid in protecting my adopted sister, Irina Kolyana. Excellent. Um, protecting from what? What does she need to protect <laughs> from? I need you guys to escort her to a settlement called Velaki, near the heart of the valley, beyond the view of Castle Ravenloft. Irina has had some unfortunate attention from Strahd himself. I'm going to kind of take like a half step back at that name, but not say anything. Uh, what sort of attention from Strahd? He We don't know for certain. However, she seems to be he seems to want her. How unsavory. <sighs> 
I know that moving Irina is a gamble. But the farther she is from Barovia and from the view of Castle Ravenloft, the safer she'll be. I've heard that Valaki is well defended, much better than the state of this village, as you can probably tell as you made your way through it. Strahd and his minions have attacked here frequently, unendlessly. <coughs> Gesundheit. <laughs> I see. Yes. We accept. <laughs> Excellent. Where do we find her? I will take How you. How do we? We'll take you yes. to my father's home. Lead and... the way, sir. <laughs> All right. He takes you guys. If you guys, is there any other questions you guys want to ask him as you're seated out? Um. How far is... <laughs> it's, it's about three years' journey. It's just further <laughs> south in the, in the, in the village. The, uh, oh. What color is your dragon conversation all over again? Further south in the village. So it's still... It's a different village. It's a new village. No, it's, it's, in, it's in Barovia. The village of oh, Barovia. Oh, it's in Barovia. Oh, okay. Yeah, just further south. You're talking about two different things. Yep. Okay. Oh, you're, do you want to know where Velaki is? Where we're taking her. Where we're taking her. Oh, Velaki is miles away. South? Uh, to, the, to the west. To the northwest. Oh. Old Stalich Roads takes, takes you directly there. Sounds good. Has Strahd had direct contact with her? Just whispers. Strahd has sieged many attacks against my father's property in hopes of taking her. Must be a formidable warrior to hold off Strahd. No. Truly, he toys with us. <laughs> no. Oof. He plays games. Strahd is not one to take things quickly. He'd rather torture and break as he kind of just motions his hand across the tavern as this once fine village showcases yes Where sounds terribly familiar uh, Nathan can you say that again you're just very quiet uh, where does the Strahd live Strahd lives in Castle Ravenloft his Where? looming fortress north of here when the fog clears during the day, occasionally you can get a glimpse of it. A large tower, dozens of peaks, just looming over the horizon. He watches us, his eyes piercing through everything. He takes a heavy drink of his uh, glass of wine, and then with a slight smile says, shall we go talk with my sister? Yes. I think that's an excellent idea. All right. He takes you guys south down the main strip. The as you guys are walking through, you have you hear the source of the crying is coming from this building labeled as E3. And you guys approach further south hitting a large manor at the end of the road. A weary-looking mansion squats behind a rusting iron fence. The iron gates are twisted and torn. The right gate lies cast aside while the left swings lazily in the wind. The stuttering squeal and clang of the gate repeats with mindless precision. Weeds choke the grounds and press with menace upon the house itself. Yet against the walls, the growth has been tramped down to create a path all about the domain. Heavy claw markings have stripped the once beautiful finish of the walls. Great black marks tell of the fires that have assailed the mansion. Not a pane nor shard of glass stands in any window. All windows are barred with planks, 
each one marked with the stains of evil open. Evil omen, sorry. Uh, question. Yes. Uh, the crying, is it an, did when we heard it, is it an adult? It, is it a child? It sounds like a, a, a woman. Okay. <laughs> you want to do anything about that, Tiny? Uh, we've already passed the house. Maybe next time we walk by. <laughs> He walks you up to the doors and says, I apologize for the state of the manor and further what you shall find inside. I'll just like furrow my brow at that sentence. <laughs> he knocks on the door with heavy knocks. And after a few moments, a small slit opens. A woman's, um, a woman's eyes are on the other side, and uh, Ismark acknowledges it with a nod. The panel slides shut and the doors open, and he steps in first, quietly reassuring that these people are here to help. Would you guys like to step in? Yes. Uh, not until he beckons us in. Much like the rules of vampires, I wait. <laughs> I will go That's in. only if you are a vampire. I walk in. Yeah, I, I'll I walk follow. In. Ah, okay. I'll follow. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been what, such a plot twist if he couldn't go in and that's the, what the note said? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the interior of the mansion is well furnished, yet the fixtures show signs of great wear. Noticeable oddities are the boarded up windows and the presence of holy symbols in every room. As you enter, in a side drawing room, you can see on the floor is an elder man lying in a simple wooden coffin, surrounded by wilting flowers and a faint odor of decay. Ismark stands and turns to you, and a younger woman, a striking young woman with auburn hair, stands next to him. She looks at you all with hesitance. And Ismark says, I would like to introduce you to my adopted sister, Irina. And with that, we're going to take a break for YouTube.